Most of us, when we were growing up as children, learned how to multiply numbers. Uh, and we probably used a device called the multiplication table, a simple printed device that showed the numbers 1 through 10 down the left hand side and across the top. And we could choose if we wanted to multiply, say, 6 times 8, we could find row 6 and column 8 and find the intersection, discover that 6 times 8 was 48. And that was a help to us in learning our multiplication tables and also being able to do multiplication. We may have been given an exercise, we were given a blank table and we had to fill it out. I know I had to do that probably about second or third grade. And as you progress through your abilities, uh, they, were, they gave you maybe a table that wasn't necessarily 1 to 10, but maybe 6 through 15 at the top and 14 through 23 down the left-hand side. And again, you had to go through and begin to fill that out and do much harder multiplication um, problems in your head and write out the result. So in this exercise, we're going to create a Python program to do that for us. And we're going to give it a starting number for the rows at the top. In this case, I said one and starting number for the columns at the left. And then it's going to develop our multiplication table using some nested loops. And it's going to build one row at a time. Now I could run this again and give it our exercise here. Of, I want columns to start at six and I want rows to start at 14. And there is our our 6 through 15 columns and our rows 14 through 23. And if I wanted to look up what was 13 uh, times 21, I could discover it's 273. So we're going to create a program that will allow us to build any multiplication table for any sequential 10 integers going across and sequential 10 integers going uh, on our rows. And then have it develop a table for each of those uh, intersections. So let's take a look at the code to do that. So I've already written the code and I have my header information here. And I did this originally as a, as a five by five. I recently modified this to make it a 10 by 10. And I had the user enter their starting column value as an integer and that's gonna become C1. And then the starting row value as an integer and that becomes R1. Then I'm gonna print a header. In my header, I'm just gonna build two strings. One of those strings is going to be my column numbers. The other string is going to be the, the dashes that underline or, or separate each column from the header. So my header is that first line. I'm going to start with the word multiply. Header two is going to start with just eight spaces. Just those spaces there. Then I have a loop. Loop is going to go from 0 to 10, or 9 times. 0, the ending number's value is going to be 9. And each time, I'm going to take my column value that I entered as the start, C1, and add I to it. And then I'm going to add that to my header row, one column at a time. I'm going to format it using a 0 placeholder that's formatted to 8 digits. And I'm going to provide the value of column. Uh, in that header. So each time through the loop, my header is going to get longer, and then my header two is also going to get longer because each time through the loop, I'm going to concatenate eight dashes and a couple spaces. So you can see there's a couple spaces between our columns. There's also a couple spaces here in my header from the value that's being created, and then a couple spaces after that to separate the columns. Once I've gone through that loop 10 times, I'm going to print my header and my header 2. And again, that's going to give us those two rows. Now I'm going to generate one row at a time. So my first row is going to be built using an, a for loop from R in range. We're going to start with the value they put in for R, which is in this case 14. And then uh, we're going to go until to that value R1 plus 10, which would be 24. That's going to give me 23 as my last row value. But then I'm going to start to build my row. So in that loop, I have my row equals, and I have six spaces of formatting whatever the number is, value of R, in this case, it would be 14, and a space, and then a vertical pipe. Remember that vertical pipe is a shift backslash. Then I have an inner loop. So here's my nested loop. For C in range, C1, column I started with, 
and we're going to go until c plus 10. So we go from c1 to the last value be c1 plus 9. And each time then through that loop, I'm going to add the intersection of the column and the row. r times c. I'm going to put that in a field width of 8. By the way, we don't need the d like I have up here. I could have just said colon 8, not necessarily colon 8d. A couple spaces after that to provide some spacing between our columns. So the first time through this loop, it's going to build the 84. The next time it's going to build the 98. The next time it's going to build the 112. The next time would be the 126 and so forth until it gets to the end of that loop. And then I'm going to print my row, one row at a time. And the second time then through our for loop, it's going to build that row. And again, multiplying the row times the column in this inner nested loop to get each of the column values. When I'm all done, I'm simply going to print a blank line, and that's the end of my program. So let's watch this run one more time. I'm going to give a value, let's say we want to maybe go from 20 through 30. So there's my columns going from 20 to 29, and my rows going from 30 to 39, and then each of the intersections. So 25 times 35 is 875. I invite you to take the time to actually create this project so you get some practice. Remember, as you're typing things in, think about what's, what you're doing there. So you're creating, in this case, you're typing in a loop, and then what's going on inside that loop. And then you're going to print those two values of header and header 2 to get those two rows across. But what you could do is just create that much that's highlighted or ignore the generating the rows and just see what you get. So you can build it a little bit of time and see what happens. It's a good practice. Uh, nested loops are very useful. As you can see, we, we're generating a lot of stuff here in just a, with just a few statements. And if I wanted to take this to 20 columns and 20 rows, all I would have to change would be these values. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.